Well, welcome to the Ward 2, Ward 5 meeting at Joe Angelo's. It looks like we have a great crowd tonight. Um, obviously, nobody was afraid to come down, as we saw on Facebook. <laughs> they were afraid to come down to Joe Angelo's for a uh, meeting, and this place is packed, so it's great to see everybody coming down here tonight. Um, we're going to... No, it's not on. This is just for cable. Cut that. No, just kidding. So anyway, um, going to have a lot of great speakers tonight. Jeff and I cover the downtown area. We split the downtown. Um, so we have a, Rob May here, the mayor, Rob May here, also to speak about development in the downtown and the city. And uh, this is Jeff's first uh, ward meeting, so I figured I'd come down and show him not how to do it. So anyway, Appreciate take it away, Jeff, bud. <clears throat> All right, good evening, everyone, uh, and, and thank you, Tom. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Jeffrey Thompson, and I am the uh, new Ward 5 City Councilor. I wanted to thank you all for coming out tonight and um, uh, taking the time to come out and uh, join the discussion of the state of Ward 2 and Ward 5. I wanted, again, to thank my uh, fellow City Councilor, Tom Moynihan, for co-hosting tonight. And lastly, I'd like to uh, thank our invited guests uh, who will be addressing you all uh, later tonight. Um, Tom, okay. I'd like to uh, recognize the mayor, uh, Bob Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for coming. I'd like to recognize our city planner, Robert May. Thank you for being here tonight. Who else we have? Shirley Azak. Oh, I thank our um, City Council President, Shirley Azak. Thank you, Shirley. <clears throat> Jerry Cassidy. I'd like to thank our State Representative, Jerry Cassidy. Thank you for being here. It goes here for a. Uh, uh, yeah. I'd like to uh, recognize and thank Assistant District Attorney, Joe Janzik. Thank you for coming tonight, Joe. Karen. Uh, yes, um, I'd especially like to thank uh, Karen Praval, our city budget director. Thank you for being here tonight, Karen. And Ed Miller was representing Mike Brady. And I'd like to thank uh, Ed Miller, who's representing uh, State Senator Mike Brady tonight. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Matt McDonough is also here. I'd like to thank our uh, uh, current register of probate, uh, Matt McDonough. Thank you, Matt. And most importantly, uh, I want to uh, inform you all that we will be providing refreshments tonight. So when those come out, uh, they'll be in the back. Please help yourself. Look at a bigger hand than everything else. I know. Hungry. <clears throat> now, what I'd like to do tonight is uh, start off with my overall theme for this meeting. I then invite uh, Councilor Moynihan uh, to address you after that. I'd like to begin a conversation. Um, and bring forward our inviting guests uh, to, to provide more details on the topics we'll be addressing tonight. Now, um, <clears throat> after uh, we discuss a topic, we're going to open it up for a few questions. Now, I want to be respectful of everybody's time tonight, so it's just going to be a few questions per topic. If at the end of the night we have additional time, then we can open it up for more questions. So my overall theme for tonight is more of a 35,000 foot perspective of Brockton. It's where we were, where we are today, and where we are heading in the future. Now, like all gateway cities, Brockton faces some specific issues. We are inheritors of a city which once had a thriving industry, which is now gone. And in its wake, it's left us with a depressed economy, a lack of jobs, and depleted buildings throughout our city. Now, how does Brockton attract new industries to our city? How can we repurpose old factories into new living spaces and commercial spaces? How do we leverage our proximity to Boston and our transportation infrastructure to accomplish this? And ultimately, how do we right-size Brockton? What's our capacity for growth? And how do we effectively reach 
our potential. We're also a city with aging schools, aging water and sewer infrastructure. As the rupture on uh, Crescent Street this past weekend reminded us all. We are also a city, due to our size, deals with the gang and drug violence issue that other neighboring communities don't deal with and that they look down our noses for. So how do we modernize and upgrade our water and sewer infrastructure, repair our roads, renovate our middle schools and our high school, and do it without overly burdening our taxpayers? Also, how do we protect our families and our neighborhoods from the punks and the gangs and the drug dealers? And how do we do it effectively with our limited resources? And lastly, Brockton has always been an immigrant community. In the past, our arrivals were from different parts of Western and Eastern Europe, and predominantly white. Today, our newly arrived immigrants are from all over the world. Cape Verde, Haiti, Africa, and South America. How do we as a community welcome and help assimilate our new neighbors while also dealing with the natural tensions that arise when different races and cultures and languages combine? Now, these are the questions and the desire to develop solutions that brought me to run for city council. I've been in an office for two months, and I can honestly say I have never been more optimistic about the future of our city. We have a mayor and his team in City Hall, a superintendent and his team in the school department, a city council, a school committee, the police and fire departments, all working together, united, dedicated to moving Brockton forward. <laughs> and making this a safe, thriving, and modern city in which we can all live and share together. So with that, I want to uh, bring forward Councillor uh, Ward 2, Councilman Tom Moynihan, to address you all. Tom? Better watch out. I think he's running for mayor. <laughs> no, it's funny. Great, great speech. He's 100% right. And we've, we've really made a lot of progress over the years, as you'll hear from the mayor. I'm just going to cut this short because we want to get our speakers in there. But everything that he has addressed is things that our current mayor, our planning department, our police department are working very diligently on. And I think you've seen, especially in the downtown area, as far as development, the vacant buildings, where Rob will bring that forward as far as... Um, what's going on in the downtown, these vacant buildings. In Ward 2, especially, we just had a great uh, opportunity for 19 Main Street that is being purchased. There will be a restaurant, apartments, office space, going to beautify that area, the parking garage. All great things are actually happening right now in the city. And with that, I'm going to bring in our mayor to uh, continue this. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to the councilors, uh, Council Monahan and Council Thompson. Great, two, a round of applause. Two great public servants. I also want to thank uh, Council President Shirley Azak and her leadership on the council. Thank you, Councilor. So, oh yeah. So it's a collective effort. To better Brockton. It's a collective effort and there's a lot of people here uh, that stay jobs at City Hall is to do just that and also there's people here that stay jobs such as uh, Jimmy Pereira and Mary Walden from OCPC or Sarah Units from Massasoit. There's a lot of people here uh, that have skin in the game for lack of a better word. Uh, it's the elected officials, it's the business owners, but more importantly it's the residents of Brockton, the residents of Brockton that deserve the best. And what I said seven weeks ago when I took office is, together, the key word is together, we can have a better community, a better city of champions, a better place that all of us call home. The only way we can do that, 
is to work together in collaboration, best practices, learning, and building blocks for success. Now we can talk about downtown, right? The Ganley building is gone. There's $190 million invested in 2019. There's gonna be more this coming year in the downtown. But what's scary is the uptick in violence, the gunshots. So what I've said to the new police chief, Manny Gomes, Manny, I wanna see increased patrols downtown. In the summer months and spring months, I wanna see walking beats downtown. But we have to spread it around the city of champions, the whole city. But the core right now, Ward 2 and Ward 5, is something that's paramount. And we need to be able to make sure that people feel safe when they visit here, but also when people like, like, like right now, uh, you know, we have people that live right downtown. Right? So, so in terms of uh, people living at Trinity uh, or, or Trinity Financial or people that are going to be moving in on, on Petronelli Way, um, phase two of Trinity is going to be happening soon. But like Cindy, I talked to Cindy Costco last night, you know, and she's bringing some issues to me that are extremely important, not just to her, but the people that live downtown. But rest assured, as long as I'm the mayor of Brockton, I don't care if it's two years or 20 years, we're going to have a better, safer community. And the only way to do that is continue to have these forums, these meetings, discussing tonight. Rob May is going to talk about expansion. Karen's going to talk about financial endeavors, capital improvements that we're going to invest in the infrastructure, in our schools, everything that the council just talked about. But listen, I just want to come here tonight to show my support for my fellow colleagues. The days of the mayor here, city councils, those days are gone. We're all duly elected. We all have a shared vision for a better Brockton. I just want to thank you for being here because it starts with you. It starts with each and every one of you. So thank you. God bless you all. And here's to Brockton. Thank you. So I'm going to um, open it up for a few questions for the mayor, if anybody has any. Any questions for our mayor? Oh, uh, no raise for you. No. <laughs> no questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So next we're going to uh, stick with the city. And I'm going to ask that uh, our city planner, Rob May, uh, come forward. Now, as the mayor referenced, we have many projects happening in our downtown area. As you can see, buildings are coming down. And, uh, you'll and soon, yeah, and other buildings are going up. So uh, I'm going to have Rob talk about some of the specific projects happening on um, at da in our downtown. And uh, I look forward to hearing from him. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. I'm going to steal Mary's easel. So thank you again for... Uh, being here tonight and giving me the opportunity to tell you about what we are doing. Um, we've had some very good years and uh, under um, uh, Mayor Sullivan, we're, we're going to keep moving forward and there's been a lot of activity happening in the city. And so um, this, for those of you who don't recognize downtown because you see it on a map every day, um, is the outline of our urban renewal district. And we are here at Joe Angelo's and we are sitting right here, right here, just outside of the district. So um, over the last uh, couple of weeks, we have uh, finished up the new uh, Carpenter parking garage. It's a 414 space uh, facility. That's going to allow us to open up the surface parking lots that are on uh, Petronelli Way and Franklin Street and move those people into that parking garage, which then allows us to redevelop that area. And the uh, governor was just here not too long ago with another nearly million dollar grant to the city to build a new road that's going to connect Petronelli to Court Street. As the mayor alluded to, the Trinity Phase 2 of the project is going to be uh, hopefully breaking ground within a year. They've uh, been through the permitting process and are now trying to uh, shore up their financing. Um, that would bring another 103 or so units to our downtown um, and, and that continues to grow. You see these three circles here. Um, they represent projects that are 
deals that have been made between the redevelopment authority and private developers or projects that are currently under construction. So the old uh, furniture building at 93 Center Street, nine story building, you can't miss it downtown. Uh, we have, uh, the redevelopment authority has acquired the property, transferred it to a, sold it to a new owner uh, who's now in the process of uh, starting a 55 unit residential conversion of the building. Uh, they are currently with, uh, with the old owner in court, but they're working their way through that process to make sure that when uh, Mr. Moham is relocated that he's properly compensated for his, his relocation. Um, over here on Main Street, not too far from us now, is uh, 121 Main Street. It's the old Kresge's department store. You might remember that from the old days. Uh, it is under construction and is going to be, a, you'll see a five-story uh, building take its place. Uh, underground parking and uh, first floor commercial retail space and four floors of residential development above that, all mixed income. And uh, we're working really hard to attract um, restaurants to downtown. That's one of the spaces that we hope to locate them in. Uh, a little bit further down on West Elm Street, uh, you'll see uh, under construction a new 45 unit development, uh, all market rate development. And then uh, just south of us, uh, next door, the mayor was talking about uh, the old Ganley's building. That's come down, or it's in the process of coming down, and we're going to have a new state office building there. It's going to save 75 jobs in Brockton. It's really important to keep uh, those jobs uh, here in the city. There's uh, other uh, circles up here. So uh, 19 Main Street, uh, first parish building. The Brockton Redevelopment Authority has a uh, redevelopment agreement uh, to see 25 residential developments there in first floor commercial space. Um, 45 uh, Pleasant Street has recently been uh, completed and that is uh, 25 residential uh, market rate development. Uh, so there's a lot of activity that you see going on downtown. So. Um, we're really excited that the plan is, is really taking off and we're adding more and more tools to our tool chest. We just recently uh, received designation from the Commonwealth to be able to offer uh, a rebatable tax credit or refundable tax credit to people who acquire specific vacant buildings or vacant retail space downtown. So if you, if you move into an empty storefront, you rehabilitate that, uh, add you know, clean out the windows, replace lights, whatever. The expenses that you have can be deducted from your taxes, or more importantly, it's a tax credit from the state. And if you don't have that much in tax uh, taxes to pay the state, it's a refundable credit. So even though um, you're not, you know, writing a, che a, a large check to the state, the state's writing a check to you. So that's coming back. We also have a uh, rent rebate program that we're working on. And uh, also in the downtown, we've created a new uh, $1.5 million loan fund to help uh, property owners build out restaurant space. You all know that we desperately want more restaurants down here. And one of the things that's making that difficult is that we lack the existing kitchen space. The former restaurants that um, have gone dark are, um, are not there anymore. And so you don't have the ventilation and the grease traps and, and all that, the things that you see or that you don't see behind the scenes that make restaurants work. And so this loan fund will be able to make uh, uh, payments to, to bring that kind of material to the restaurants to help them expand. Uh, another project we are working on, and it's a continuation of our downtown planning effort, but is more in Ward 5, um, and that's the old CSX rail yards. You might remember those on the northwest side of downtown, or northeast side of downtown, excuse me. Um, you have the train station, uh, the MBTA train station here, and so this is an uh, area that's off of Court Street behind Elliott uh, in that area. The, the rail yards haven't been used in 
25 or 30 years now. Um, and we think that there's a better opportunity to redevelop that neighborhood, uh, to create jobs, to create tax revenue to the city, and to create some housing for the, for, for the city, uh, because it's right next to the area. You can see in this plan, uh, what we would like to do is use Trout Brook as a natural feature to connect Puffer Park in the north to Snow Park in the south with a new uh, walking trail and create more open space in the center of this development to really create a, a nice natural amenity and to knit these two neighborhoods together that have been separated for years. So with this um, you know, revitalization of the stream and uh, the natural area, it's going to be a beautiful place to walk your dog, see some nature, uh, and get from park to park. We also want to look at an area uh, for smaller first-time home buyers, you know, starter homes, uh, people who are looking to downsize. Uh, that might be a, a nice uh, neighborhood for that, you know, a, as this is knitting the neighborhood back together again. And then closer to the station, we're looking at, at more dense development because you're right on top of the train station. So we see a mix of housing, residential development, uh, mixed use, ground floor commercial space, and then the further the back, we're calling it uh, a commercial flex. So there could be a multiple uh, different uh, activities happening in that area, but they're all tax generating, uh, job generating projects, which we don't have um, a planned industrial area in this area, in, in, in Brockton, and this would be the first really industrial park in the city since uh, Route 24 went in and they built around the Coesit Brook West Chestnut area. So it's a great opportunity to attract some new jobs into Brockton. So this development is proposed? It is proposed. We are working our way. We've created a master plan. We're in the process of creating an uh, urban revitalization district so we can have some state authority to, to do these projects. We are working with CSX right now to find a buyer for their property. They own about 36 acres in the total um, 54 acre, 55 acre area. Once we get that CSX site settled, we'll be able to work on the other areas. And so we're working with some of the landowners now uh, you know, whether it's Banner System on the north as they expand their operation or uh, further down Evans Machine, uh, which is a, a well-known uh, industrial manufacturer here in Brockton that makes components for the Navy and for NASA and, and other, you know, high-end users, which is really good. So they're going to stay. We want to keep those kinds of jobs here. We want to protect those. Those are really good paying jobs and um, it, it's the kind of job that you can raise your family on. And then um, we're going to skip a little bit further east. Over closer to Massasoit, um, you all might remember where Christos was and the conference center that's next to Christos. This is all this property in blue is owned by the Commonwealth. Um, it had been hoped at one time that we expand the Massasoit campus out into that area, create uh, Allied Health uh, Center, uh, Allied Health School, uh, but unfortunately the new governor has uh, different plans, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stymie Brockton. We, have, um, we're, we are working with the Commonwealth now on making this space available uh, for purchase. Uh, the Commonwealth owns it, so we want to find a good seller for them, or a new good buyer, excuse me. And the money that the Commonwealth gets from selling off this property will go to rehabilitating some space on campus now to help build out a new Allied Health building. So they want to take one of their older buildings, gut it, rehab it, and, and expand their Allied Health program there. So. Uh, uh, Senator Brady had uh, introduced some legislation. It's in the uh, it, it's in the Senate session right now, and we're hoping that that it will pass out uh, this session, and it will allow for uh, that money to be recaptured and used here in Brockton. In the meantime, we've got to come up with a plan on how we're going to re reuse this site. 
And so we're going to be working with the counselor and having a couple of visioning sessions to figure out what happens over in this area. How are we going to be able to use it to stimulate development in this uh, real estate node. Um, you've got a couple of strip malls in this area, but you've got the Home Depot and um, a, a Shaw's and some other retail in this area that's kind of hanging on. But if, if we do this right, we could create a lot of interest and, and generate a lot of activity in this part of the ward. We're also working on a new intersection at Massasoit, Quincy, and Crescent Street. And then just recently, uh, you wanted me to comment on, um, there's a proposed development, 25 units, um, that is just north of uh, Crescent on, uh, on Quincy. Uh, they're looking at, um, you know, potentially senior housing, students, uh, young professionals. Um, it's a it's the first time that we're seeing interest in new ground up development. That's a very good sign that people are willing to invest their money in our community. Um, when people stop building in Brockton, we have a serious problem. And so I'm really excited to see projects coming up, working with the community to make sure that they fit into our vision for a uh, Brockton of the future, that we're generating tax revenue, we're creating jobs, we're creating great places to live and great places to play um, with parks and things. Yes, ma'am. Sure. But, uh, how about the industry? Because when you have been bringing in so second hand cars, and it's, um, it doesn't bring really jobs. So the industry will have the, the people having jobs. Yes, we're looking for, for uh, heavier commercial uses, um, small manufacturers, uh, assembly. Uh, small research development kind of things, prototyping. So bringing those kinds of jobs into Brockton is really important for us. I'm sorry, thank you. She's asking about uh, factories, are all factories. So, but you, uh, you asked about a specific building. No, I'm asking it in general because uh, Brockton is getting full of uh, second, hand, second hand cars in the uh, ah. places now. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, that industry is better than having those spaces full of cars. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, it, if it, the, the used cars, the uh, mechanics repair shop, the things like that, th those are decent paying jobs and those are somebody's businesses. Um, but we have been uh, set upon like a plague of locusts. I know it's getting close to Easter so I'm trying to use Ten Commandments. Um, they're everywhere and I think as we go forward we're going to have to create some new licensing requirements, new zoning requirements, so that when they do locate in our community, that they're screened from the street, that they don't keep the junk cars out all day and all night, that, that they respect our community. And we don't want to push them off somewhere. We want them to work with us on that. And I think, you know, with, if we can work with city council, and I know the mayor is, is uh, very supportive of of the ideas of, of working with those businesses to bring them up uh, to a, a level that is more appropriate for our community. And there's some problem children and maybe they need to find a new home, but most of these people are um, good, honest, hardworking folk. They just need a little bit of, of assistance getting to be a better place. Thank you. Yes. So we need more industry. You're right. One more question, sir. Uh, I think you said something about that empty lot at the corner of Quincy Avenue, Quincy Street. 
Well, Quincy and Crescent. Yes. No, 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 no. Further up the street, further up Quincy, as you go through the set of lights, there's a lot. There used to be a whole bunch of trees there. They were all cut down. And now they have kind of, I guess, paved it somewhat. Uh, right the corner, uh, behind the, uh, the top of street. North Kerry, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, right, right at the corner of Quincy Street as you're going up. Quincy at North Kerry? No, 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 no. Quincy Street and Quincy Avenue. Quincy Avenue. Oh. Yeah, by the hospital. Yeah, by the hospital. The Quincy Street. Quincy yeah. Ave is where you go down oh, yeah, yeah, where the yeah, Dodgers. Yeah. Oh, no, the yeah, yeah. Is? You stumped yeah, me. Where what center is? Right. You know where the multi center is? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, just before that, right there in the corner, Quincy Ave and Quincy Street. So why don't we lock up? What are they going to do with that? Like I don't know what is happening. I, I, I haven't heard of anything that's happening there. Yeah, they, they cleared it and yeah, they cleared uh, it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do not know. Well, I'll, I'll look we'll find out yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. I, I think what's important um, to stress is looking at uh, one of these signs, we, there's about seven circles on that sign of buildings uh, being torn down and uh, new buildings being built or uh, buildings that are already in the process of being completed. There, as the mayor said, 200, almost $200 million uh, worth of investments in our downtown. That's exciting. We're about five years into uh, a 20 year downtown action strategy. So as each new development starts, that gains more interest in additional developments. Now you will see over the next few years that the, once these developments are completed and people are moving in, the commercial will follow. So uh, people who ask, where's the commercial? It's coming, believe me, it's coming. Additionally, another exciting thing about this time is what the decisions we are making today are going to be felt throughout Brockton for the next 50 years. So it's important that all of us work together. We need to hear all of your voices uh, when it comes to making these decisions. And you can guarantee that I and Tom will both listen to all of your uh, questions and concerns and your input and together we will build Brockton for the next hundred years. Um, and so, really. So what I'd like to do is uh, uh, introduce and bring forward uh, Mary Walden. Uh, Mary is the chairman or is it president or? The Grand Poopa of uh, the, uh, oh, the Old Colony uh, Planning Board. Uh, so give, a, give her a word. Uh, oh, and also uh, Jimmy Pereira, who was also a member of the council. Thank you, Mary. Oh, oh, okay. Um, uh, we also had a few more. Yep. We also had a few more uh, uh, elected officials walk in. Judy Sullivan, Ward 5 School Committee member. Thank you for being here, Judy. Tim Cruz, our Ward 1 City Councilor. Thank you for coming, Tim. Thank you, Mayor. So I'm really not the grand poopa. My, my title, I'm the executive director of the Old Colony Planning Council, and that's a regional planning agency. We're right next to the Metro South Chamber building, um, the Thomas Edison plant. Um, the Metro South Chamber is on one side, and we are on the other. Um, we welcome you at any time at 70 School Street. But I'm here with Jimmy Pereira. Um, the Old Colony Planning Council, this is a really great segue after um, Rob's presentation about all the things going on in downtown. But working with Mayor Sullivan along with the councilors, um, both Monaghan as well as um, Jeff Thompson, the, um, working on doing a study about traffic and the different accidents and pedestrian and bicycle and um, different crashes. So a study from the A Avon, from Avon, northerly, all the way to the West Bridgewater border. We're looking at all the different intersections and all the different activities going in and out of that main street. 
So why are we doing that, right? You all have a presentation in front of you. I'm not going to provide that. If you don't, is there anybody who needs a presentation? We have extras. Um, but all this presentation is on our website. The idea is that we're doing a study. It started with gathering data working on doing counts at each of the intersections of different times someone crosses the street, sometimes a car, particularly for those cars that are going um, the wrong way on School Street. Um, if anybody has experienced anybody going past or blowing a red light or, you know, there's a whole lot of things. So we had staff, Old Colony Planning staff, um, um, Jimmy was one of them, um, and doing actual counts and that data was put into a database and we're starting to accumulate a number of the things along the way. But the biggest part what we need to do is to talk to you and to hear your experience and have you take a survey and talk about all the different experience that you may have. So we're going to, um, we'll be going to wards uh, three and ward four um, in, a, in, when it, uh, in about three weeks or so. In a couple weeks um, we'll be gathering some more information. You were handed a survey, a hand um, paper survey. Um, you can do that and fill it out today. You can take it online. You can go to our website. Give us your opinions. Um, all of these, all of this information is going to be pulled together and then put into a report. Then that report will talk about. Um, different people's opinions along with that data with some suggestions about where to put your valued dollars. Um, this study is funded by the state, um, which is still your dollars, uh, but we're using the, that, that information um, and I know that Captain Gomes is going to be following up after myself, which again, along with the DA's office, it's a good tool to have where there are perhaps a stop sign or a light or a caution or whatever it may be. Um, and again, this is not only vehicles, it has to do with people walking. And in downtown, there's a lot of walkers with people coming in and out. And if we're going to be bringing in restaurants and more housing, we're going to have more people walking, which is all a wonderful thing. But we also want to make sure that everybody's safe. So crosswalks and things of that nature, please take the time to fill out this information. Um, I am going to ask Jimmy if he can just add a couple minutes because we, we, we bullied our way into having a couple minutes of your uh, schedule. One minute. I'm down to one minute. But I'm just going to have Jimmy just... So, so, so we're going to leave these poster boards up here. It identifies for us the data of the spots along Main Street and in here different spots along the way. We typically would ask you to help us identify where those, tr those spots are for Ward 5 and Ward 2 in this particular case. But um, do you want to add anything? Sure. Uh, a couple of things. Um, and one, someone wanted me to mention, although it's not in our jurisdiction or our, in our, under our purview, uh, the two-way Main Street conversion will be looked at, but ultimately it will be up to the city to move forward with that. Uh, but again, we implore everyone to please take the survey, visit the website www.ocprpa.org, uh, and you go under, uh, in, right on the front page there's a Main Street Corridor study page. Click on that and you'll be able to take the short five-minute survey. Uh, and please, we will also pass around some dots as other people talk and uh, also post-it notes. Please write down any feedback or uh, issues that you see or have encountered at any of these intersections and we'll be glad to uh, put it into our report. So I'll go around with the post-its and feel free to come up anytime uh, and put up the dots and the uh, post-it notes. The dot red is the most highest priority for you, the most dangerous intersection that you've ever encountered. Yellow would be medium uh, and green would be one of your best encounters or maybe the low uh, priority area or places where you think should be highlighted as somewhere that's more elegant and uh, uh, sufficient for uh, studies and issues as well. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jimmy. I think what's important here is this is another opportunity for all of us, for all of you, to decide how we move forward in this issue. It's your input. It's you pointing out these troubled spots in your experience that's going to be um, looked at and, 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 and evaluated and weighed uh, to resolve some of these issues. So again, we need to hear your voice um, and, and we appreciate that. Again, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna bring up our new chief and I just wanna say a few things about him before before we bring him up. Uh, Manny, uh, he was in my second term, he came in 
uh, and really helped us out in the downtown area. I think my first year in office in 2010, we had a shooting downtown on Pleasant Street. We started bringing back the walking beats. Community policing, going to different neighborhoods, police officers getting out, walking around in the neighborhoods, meeting the families, the children. And Manny really kept that up. And it really helped out. Community policing really helped out in this city, bringing a trust between the police officers and the, the children and the families in the area. So it was really huge. In, and like Jeff was talking, at, we were talking about earlier, the immigrant population that we have that was not necessarily trusting of the police, we're becoming more and more trusting of the police officers today. And it really, and actually, when you think about the immigrant population now, what Jeff was talking about earlier, that we had uh, the Italians, the Irish, the Polish, everything, th those groups earlier, now you're having the Hispanic, Cape Verde, Haitian, these are the new people in the city of Brockton, and at this time, as I walked the wards the last couple of years, they're now taking ownership of the city. So that's making it easier on our police officers. They're taking ownership. They want to be here. They know, they know it's their home, and it really is. You can just see Brockton coming back. But Manny, is, when, he, when he first came on the Belzai, he did a great job. He was there for the councils. Any problems we had, he was right there. He's a great presence. He's a calming voice when you have trouble in the city of Brock and the people want to hear him speak. And uh, so with that, did you want to say something no, else? No, Okay. Please. All right, so I want to, Manny, come on up. Come on. Here's the new chief. <laughs> 10 bucks. <laughs> there you go, buddy. There you go, Thank Manny Gomes. Thank you. Uh, everybody hear me? Okay. Oh, yes, no? Not even on? No, no, it's not, it's only for the cable. Okay. All right, then I'll speak loudly. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to uh, be back. It's, uh, uh, it, it's quite a job, and we're, uh, we're bringing some things back. And one of the key things is to put more officers on the street is a key thing. Uh, it, it, you, you can't have community policing without officers on the street. It, you, just, you just can't have that. One thing you're going to see a lot of this year, you're going to see officers on walking beats. I, I, uh, it's something that we did before, and uh, it was uh, greatly appreciated by our business district, districts, uh, like in Montello, Campello, and downtown. Uh, it, brings, it brings something different, makes people feel safer, and it brings more uh, business to these areas. So you're going to see, uh, you're going to see more of that. You're also going to see more officers out there. And I, and I especially, I want to tell you this because I need you to help me and get off your phones when you're driving, folks. All right? I, and, and I say this not only, I say this because you, know you know the new law that they passed the other day, right? You can't pay any phones at all. But I, I do tell you this and I remind you because we're finding that phone use is playing a role in more than half of all the accidents out there. All right, so I, I just need you to be careful with that. Uh, we've all become so dependent. All right, I can't say I haven't done it all the time. All right, I'm not here to preach to you. I'm just, I'm just telling you to please just be careful. All right, that's that's a key thing. And I'm also uh, from the department perspective, we're going out trying to meet with some community members and different groups and reconnect. This is not going to work if we don't trust each other and communicate. Okay. Police department can't be in a vacuum, and we cannot have no communication. Crimes get solved when people help us. That's that's the reality, and so uh, we want to do all this outreach. We want to clear some of these things up. So please help us, and uh, we will be out more and more to be seen, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, I did. Yes, yes. I want to uh, uh, thank uh, Chief Gomes. Uh, he's been in office for uh, just a few weeks now, and uh, the the level of communication that Chief Gomes has uh, has implemented, uh, both with the mayor and the city council, um, he, we, we're in constant communication. We cannot. I cannot stress how important the safety of our community is to our mayor 
to our city council and to our police chief. We can have all the nice restaurants, roads, uh, everything else in Brockton. If we're afraid to walk out on our streets, it's not worth anything. That is our city's number one duty, is to make sure you are all safe. Together, we are going to ensure that. Um, next, oh, oh. Again, I'd like to uh, uh, recognize a few people that uh, uh, also appeared. Uh, Ward 3 City Councilor, the Dean of the City Council, uh, Dennis Ianeri. Thank you for being here, Dennis. <laughs> City Councilor at Large, and my good friend, Rita Mendez. Hey, Rita. And also, our new Ward 2 School Committee member, um, uh, Cynthia Rivas Mendez. Good to see you, Cynthia. Thank you for coming. So we're, we're going to stay on a uh, law enforcement theme at this time, and so I'm going to have the pleasure to welcome and introduce Assistant District Attorney Joe Janzik. Now, Joe works in our district attorney's office closely with our district attorney. He is our um, go-to guy for our Safe Streets project. Many of you might recognize him from our many uh, Safe Streets meetings, one held recently yesterday. Joe is on top of this. He's a great attorney, um, and uh, I, I welcome him up forward. Thank you, Joe, for being here. Uh, and thanks everyone. On behalf of the District Attorney, District Attorney Tim Cruz, uh, thank you all for being here. I know a lot of you, I see a lot of familiar faces from our Safe Streets meetings uh, and, hi Ellie. <laughs> uh, you know, folks, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna belabor the point. There have been a lot of great speakers here tonight, but I, I just wanna stress a couple of things um, because they're very important to what Councillor uh, Thompson and, and uh, Councillor Monaghan are, are here to do. Collaboration is the key to our success in the city. And I, I want to take a second because I, I know that there have been some recent articles about uh, shots being fired in the city, and that's disturbing for everybody, right? But I also want to tell the folks, and we've stressed this, uh, you know, the counselors are, are terrific attendees at our meetings uh, on a regular basis, monthly basis, right? We're there every month, and we're there with our legislative de delegation, we're there with our law enforcement partners, um, we're there with community members, we're there with clergy, talking about these issues, and I will say this, there is more good than bad in Brockton. And that's a message, frankly, that is not out there too much. Now we, we've done, and for those of you, and I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a statistics guy, right? I like, the, I like the data, because the data tells the story. And the story that the data tells is, all law enforcement working together across the city. And when I say law enforcement, I mean Brockton Police and, and one of the first things that Chief Gomes and the mayor did when they came in was come to meet with us to talk about what, what are we doing, what can we be doing better. Um, that's, that's huge. The state police, the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, uh, we have the Sheriff's Department. Everybody works together here, and that is good news. That is the key to success and continued success. And I will say this, our, our statistics from last year, uh, individuals who were hit by gunfire in the city were down 25% in the city last year, down 25%. That's huge. That's, in 2016, folks, there were zero street violence homicides in the city of Brockton. For a city of 100,000 people, that is gigantic. Why are we not hearing that story, right? And yet, we keep the pedal down, right? Those agencies that I just mentioned are here every day. They're here every day working in the city, whether you see them or not. And you'll see from time to time uh, some operations that come down, and, and those are the things that are proactive. They keep the violence down. We don't just react to shots being fired. We are keeping the violence down by proactive drug investigations. And, th and that's the thing that's driving a lot of the violence in the city. I hate to say it. Narcotics distribution. So, you know, in good times and bad, we're there. And we hope that everybody else is, it comes out, comes to our meetings, gives us feedback. You know, one of the things that Chief Gomes just discussed is, is look, we can't do it without people's participation. 
when a shot gets fired in the city, we need people to call the police. And, you know, it, it's sad, but the shot spotter system is a way that we can account for an expert, you know, every gunshot, gunshot except, you know, except the ones that, that the folks that call 911, you know, if, if nobody calls 911, we don't know what you know, we don't know what happened on the street, then we won't know about it. But the shot spotter system is a great way to actually account for that. So, um, so anyway, uh, I just want everybody to know uh, there is more good news than bad, and you know, and yet it can be always better. So, and it's not just a law enforcement issue; it's everybody. It's all of us around this room. So, you know, we thank everybody for their collaboration. We thank the counselors for their support, and and uh, we're just. Uh, Looking forward to tomorrow and doing the best job we can do just like we did yesterday. So thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, I recommend everybody attend our Safe Streets meetings. There is a great story to be told in Brockton. If your only uh, form of communication or information is what's hap uh, is our social media or our newspapers, you're not getting the full story. Our uh, partnerships with our state, federal, and county officials is amazing. And um, so please, I recommend the next uh, uh, Safe Street program you attend. I will put out that information uh, on my uh, Facebook page. I, I hope all uh, city uh, members, uh, especially our Ward 5 members, like my city council page. Um, I will continually put out the information which I believe uh, you should all be aware of. And so, um, and that's a great, a great way for us to all communicate. Um, I'd also uh, like to point out that I do have a sign-in sheet in the back. Uh, before you do leave tonight, please sign in. It's my intent to develop a newsletter, a quarterly newsletter. Uh, that newsletter will keep you up to date on the happenings uh, in our ward, and uh, it's another form of uh, communication between you and myself. Um, I would like at this time to call forward our uh, city budget director, uh, Karen Praval. Uh, Karen, yep. And uh, she's going to talk about our, our city finances. Thank you, Karen. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming out. On behalf of the finance department, I say that Brockton is in a really good. Oh, okay. Hi, hi, thank you for coming. Um, on behalf of the finance department, I'd say that Brockton is in a very good financial state. This is definitely a new era where we're looking at more transparency, engaging with the residents, working with city departments and city staff. This is the first time that the city of Brockton has engaged in a six-year capital plan. This plan is looking at all the capital needs for the city over the next six years. and. We're also planning our FY21 budget. One thing I could say in, our, in the finance department, we're always looking at ways to improve the quality of life for the residents, looking at making prudent financial decisions and things that we can do so that it doesn't impact taxpayers. Thank you, Karen. Um, so we're going to move on to, I think, an issue that over the next five months is the most important issue in Brockton, and that is our 2020 census. Every year, $675 billion worth of federal funds are appropriated based upon population totals. Ten years ago, Brockton, we struck out. We did not have full participation in our 2020 census. What that led us to is an undercount. And that means millions of dollars every year uh, lost to our city. Again, the, the 2020 census is important. I'm going to have a, a very knowledgeable man, Raymond Bennett from the 2020 census, from the, from the feds. You work, you work for the feds, right? You work for the federal government? Yes. Okay. 
Raymond is going to tell, uh, talk to you a little bit about the census, and um, you know it's important that we all listen because this is valuable information. Thank you, Ray. Can we can we keep it down a little bit out back? Can't hear him out here. Hi everybody, my name is Ray Bennett. I'm with the U.S. Census Bureau and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the 2020 Census. Uh, I'm going to give an abbreviated version of our presentation. So I'm going to stick with the three most important things about the 2020 Census. The Census is safe, the Census is easy, and the Census is important. Let's talk about why it's safe. All of your responses to the 2020 Census are protected confidential information. The Census Bureau will never share information that would identify an individual or a household with any government agency, court, at the federal, state, or local level. We also will not disclose this information to the public. Every person that works for the U.S. Census Bureau takes an oath of confidentiality. We will protect your information, and if we were to violate that oath, we'd be subject to five years in prison, or a $250,000 fine, or both. So it is safe to respond to the 2020 Census. The Census is important. Over $675 billion in federal funding is at stake in this count. We want to make sure that we get an accurate count so each state, each town, each city gets its fair share of federal resources for health care, for education in schools, for student loan programs, for WIC, for TANF, for SNAP. These are all critical programs based on census population data. We only get one chance every 10 years to get this right. Every 10 years since 1790, the Constitution requires we count every person residing in the United States, regardless of status, to make sure we get an accurate count. Uh, we need to make sure we count everybody. We need to make sure we get the appropriate resources. And finally, the census is easy. There are four ways to respond to the 2020 census. You can respond online. You can respond by phone. You can respond by mail, or you can uh, answer the census with somebody in person at your door uh, when we go door to door from April until the end of July. Online, phone, and mail is called self-response. Those are the most, that's what we prefer at the Census Bureau. It's the highest quality data that we receive. It is also um, the easiest way to respond to the census. And if you don't want it to interact with somebody at your door, if you don't want a federal employee to come knock, the easiest way to avoid that is to self-respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. Starting March 12th, so we're just two weeks away, households will get an invitation to respond to the 2020 census, online or by phone. You can uh, respond to it online or by phone starting March 12th, even if you haven't received that invitation, but you'll get a couple reminder letters. Starting April 8th, the paper form will be mailed to households. So if you want to fill it out on paper, because that's the way you've always done it, you just have to wait a little bit longer. That will come April 8th. And then the end of April is when we start non-response follow-up. That's when we start sending enumerators out to the doors. I also want to mention, because it's a great opportunity, we need help to conduct the census. We are recruiting 54,000 people across the state of Massachusetts to come and be census takers with us at the Census Bureau. The pay rate is $22 to $25 an hour in Plymouth County. Uh, it's flexible hours, paid training. Um, most jobs will last about 8 to 12 weeks on average. Uh, some will get hired for multiple operations, so it'll be 8 weeks and 8 weeks and 8 weeks until the end of the census in July. Uh, so it's a great opportunity. You can apply on 2020census.gov slash jobs. And if you want more information about the census or specific information, go to 2020census.gov. Uh, we have a lot of promotional materials, a lot of partnership information. Uh, and if you want to be a partner with the U.S. Census Bureau, I'm a senior partnership specialist. Uh, my colleague Pedro de Jesus has met a lot of the community-based organizations in, in the city, uh, and we are working our best to meet as many people, anybody who wants to be helpful, anybody who cares about an accurate count, we're here for you, we're here to support you, and we'll do the best we can to make sure the city of Brockton has an accurate count in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, again, the 2020 census, unbelievably important. I'm going to keep ringing that bell for the next five months. Um, uh, for all you, uh, everybody here is a community leader. So please bring this information back to the organizations that you belong to, to your neighbors, to your friends. We must get a fair, accurate, and complete count. Um, 
March 12th. That's when it begins. And so um, we look forward to that. We look forward to Brockton being fairly counted. Uh, right now, I'd like to bring forward uh, two of our school committee members that I previously introduced. Um, uh, Cynthia Rivas Mendez, our new Ward 2 school committee member, and Judy Sullivan, our Ward 5 school committee member. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, I just wanted to start with thank you so much for all the votes that I received for giving me this opportunity to be able to represent you in the school committee. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Cynthia Rivas Mendes. I am a Latin American local mother, and when you see me, you most likely will see me with my 15-month-old name, Ezekiel. I'm an educator. I teach special education for the Boston Public Schools, specific, specifically with kids with intellectual impairment, emotion impairment, and um, a specific learning impairment. Um, I have a strong background in education. I went to College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Mass. I got my master's from Boston University, and, um, and I got it on teaching and curriculum with a focus in special education. My husband is from Brockton. He was enrolled in the Brockton Public School. When we chose to get married, we chose Brockton because I think Brockton is an excellent city. It's also a great representation and diversity of different people, as we can see in this room. Um, so this is the place that we definitely have chosen to live, play, and grow. I admire that many professionals have gone through the school system and they continue to come back with their kids um, and uh, with their kids and the next generation succeed and have access to those opportunities. And we see that all around with elected officials, with Chief Gomes, um, and different people in the Brockton community. So I really admire that. Um, I strongly believe that we need to work in collaboration um, and I plan to work with Tom Monahan, Ward 2 City Council, Jerry Cassidy, our state rep, and my school committee team that includes all the ward reps. Um, it also includes Major Su Mayor Sullivan and our superintendent, Mike Thomas, who will be coming a little later. I want to ensure that our district is getting the support and resources it needs to give all of our children a high quality education. This year, we are very fortunate because we are getting some funds from the Student Opportunity Act. More details to come. Uh, we will be working on our budget to be able to provide specific details, but as of now, the district plans to hire more teachers and adjustment counselors, especially more people of color, to better reflect our student population. So yay to that. Um, our student, our district is also working on providing teachers with cultural competency, um, professional development, so they can better understand our students and also incorporate engaging lessons in their curriculum. This week, Mike Thomas met with all of the teachers of the district to hear their feedback as they are the first lines of, of defense that are on a regular basis understanding our students, seeing our students, and seeing the needs of our students. So he got feedback for them for our three-year student opportunity plan. Also, the school committee voted to move forward with a statement of interest to the Mass School Building Authority to do a comprehensive renovation of our new Brockton High School, which many of us know it's no longer new. It's about 50 years old. So this is amazing. I wanted to let you know that the community center is up and running at the North Middle School and that's from Monday to Thursday, 5 to 9. Um, they have different support groups. They have homework help. They're helping out with FAST applications for students who desire and plan to go to college. And they have different community programs. I'm here to represent us, and most importantly, for our students in our ward to feel and be successful. If you have any questions or would like to contact me, I have a Facebook page. It's called Cynthia for Brockton Schools. I also have a phone number, which I can share with you guys and also my email. I continue to believe that we can, we will, we must. Together we're going to continue to empower our parents and, our, um, and, our, and advocate for our children. We will encourage all students to unlock their full potential and we must ensure that every child receives a high quality education. Thank you so much for your time and for coming out to this meeting. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Judy Sullivan from the Ward 5 School Committee. Um, I have been on for six term, six years now, three terms. I'm starting my fourth term. Um, 
Cynthia talked a lot about the Student Opportunity Act. I just wanted to ask a little bit, add a little bit. The Student Opportunity Act will provide additional Chapter 70 aid to chronically underfunded school districts beginning in 2020-2021. To qualify for this increased aid, Brockton must submit, submit a three-year plan to DESE, Massachusetts Department of Education. A key requirement of the Student Opportunity Act is that funds must be used to create or strengthen existing evidence-based programs aimed at closing student opportunity and achievement gaps. So, they, you know, they, they want to know how we're spending the money, what is it being spend, spent on, and we have to spend it on these certain things that they're naming. The Student Opportunity Act is the district's way of outlining the programs and redoubling its commitment to offerings that specifically address the needs of our students. Also, we are planning on opening an online learning school for our home teaching students, which will be in the on North Main Street in the old Rockland Trust building, I believe it was. It's the one next to the Waite, fu the Waite Funeral Home. Okay. There is a district, the district review is also going on, whereas the, the district will be reviewed and then they will, the state will come back with a report. Okay. Uh, let's see. The Gateway to College program is starting up again with more students. Okay, this is a program that's held at Massasoit Community College for students that kind of left school, but they didn't get a high school diploma. So this brings them back so that they get the high school diploma. Also, you, sh you probably will be reading about us purchasing our own buses. We want to start to purchase our own buses because the bus companies out there are charging us a lot of money for just to rent the buses. So if we start to buy our own buses, then we can use the buses on the weekends for field trips in the summer, and we would own the buses. And it comes at a lot, probably save about 23,000 a bus, okay? Um, if anybody has any questions, I have my cards with me and I'll put them on the table back there. You can also contact me through the email on the card. I thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, all, all the work that you do on our school committee is much appreciated. Um, and uh, thank you again for all your work. Uh, keeping it on an education theme, I'd like to welcome uh, our school superintendent, Mike Thomas. He's going to speak to you tonight about our, um, uh, our increased school budget and uh, also about the uh, potential renovation of Brockton High. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm happy to announce that um, for the first time in eight years, the layoffs in the Brockton Public Schools are over with the new Student Opportunity Act. Um, so just uh, all our budget information is uploaded onto our website under Student Opportunity Act um, for you to see. It's also translated. Um, so it basically tells you how much money we're getting from the state. Uh, we have to put a three-year district plan together. Um, I'll be setting up community meetings through the month, the month of March to get input from the community about how this money should be spent. It's part of the way uh, you have to go about developing your plan. You have to get all kinds of feedback from stakeholders. So that includes parents and community members. So I want to thank the school committee for the work they've, they're doing with that. I want to thank our state reps, because if it wasn't for Brockton, the Student Opportunity Act would not have been voted through. Um, as you know, the, the state reps have been working very hard on um, Beacon Hill to get us this money and get this um, funding through. Brockton was the leader the first time when they sued the state to get um, equitable funding for the city, and we were threatening a lawsuit again. Thankfully, they came, they came out with this new bill, and we didn't have to sue. But So this year, basically, after all expenses, we're going to have about $8 million to spend. Um, and that's a lot compared to what we've been cutting. We've cut over 60 million in, over the last eight years. So after we roll the system over, I mean everything we have now going into next year with no layoffs, that we'll still have an additional $8 million to spend on bringing back teachers, adjustment counselors to support kids, guidance counselors, support staff needed, paraprofessionals, um, MTAs, school police, custodial. so every area of the school system we're going to be hiring. Um, 
As Judy said and as Cynthia said, we really look into higher diversity. So please encourage people to, to apply. Um, again, every union will be hiring. That's school secretaries, that's school police, custodians, teachers, adjustment counselors, therapeutic support, um, lunch staff. So um, we'll be hiring for all these positions. The, they'll be posted. So we hope, obviously, that people apply. And obviously, we are looking for diversity throughout the whole school system. So with that being said, I'll answer any I'll stay around. I'll answer any questions. But um, right now, we're in really good shape. And it's been a lot of hard work from people before me in the school committee to really put things in place that allowed us to get to this situation. Sure. I don't know if you can answer this question. You know what they're going to be doing with the uh, Shaw Center? I don't. So the Shaw Center, the mayor is closing as of April 1st, and then the city council is going to take up. There's been talk about getting, giving it to the school department, but unfortunately, it needs a lot of repairs. So the way the school department works is that any repairs to a building that go over a the cost of 150000 you cannot use school department money for, that's called the capital repair. So, any, so basically anything that has to be done over 150000 has to be done with city side money, not school department money. So the, the mayor has decided, this, the, he's, there's a few events they're finishing in March that were scheduled before. And then it's gonna close on April 1st. And then the city council is gonna vet it out, decide what the best use, whether they give it to the school department or do whatever they decide to do with it. But at this time, there's no plans for us to take it over until they decide how they're gonna repair it. Thank you. That's a good question. Thank, Thank you. you. No, it's kind of separate. The, base, the baseball field still, I believe, has two years left on the lease with the rocks. The um, Shaw Center now is fully under the control of the city. That lease ended last January. Um, and then the, we still use it for our baseball team. Um, so our varsity team still plays their games there. Um, and we're allowed to do that. But uh, the rocks, I believe, have two more years left on their lease. So I'm sure. After that two years over, the city will have to decide what to do with the stadium as well. Yeah, it would be nice. Yep. What's that? Sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. No, no, no. What a great job you're doing, Mike. All right. <laughs> Was it you that sent me the message today about what the schools are doing about this? Coronavirus? Yes, it is. So we, we obviously follow our Department of Public Health, Mass Department of Public Health uh, guidelines which now continues to have, continuing to have us do what we do for the, the fight off the flu. So basically hand washing, hand sanitizer in school, making sure our custodians are disinfecting all um, surface areas where students and, and um, teachers you know, work off of desks and chairs, obviously the cafeteria tables. So we'll continue to stay on top of that and we obviously follow the De Department of Public Health guidelines. We'll continue to watch it very closely. I get emails through the superintendents. Um, there's a listserv of superintendents. So we get emails from the state all the time updating us on things like this, weather situations or things as, as viruses. So we'll continue to update it and we'll continue to send notices out to parents uh, in the community and continue to update it on our website as well. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I have heard that children, for whatever reason, that I don't know for sure. I, I can't answer. I don't. I'm, you know, I that which. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, again, it's what's that? Their immune system. Yeah, immune systems are stronger, and um, and again, we'll continue to watch it. And as we always do, we make sure that we clean our schools the best we can, disinfect, and we'll continue to do that, um, and just continue to follow the guidelines of the. CDC and the Mass Department of Public Health. Yeah, yep. You got some parents here tonight. You want to just what a great job they do? Oh, <laughs> they're the glue of the school system. Believe me. So there's um, the parents do please the work that they do to support the teachers and what the work they do to, to support students is amazing. And um, yep. So we look forward to hiring more parents to support. Um, the schools, we look forward to, um, I mean, everything that they do, they, they're, they're monitors on vans, they, they work extended day programs, they support um, special education classrooms and bilingual education classrooms, and um, they, they, they are just, and we, we had actually two 
paras that were recognized at the school committee meeting two weeks ago that actually saved a life. There was a student choking during uh, lunch at the Gilmore School and two paras jumped into action and did the Heimlich man uh, maneuver and uh, the child, you know, obviously spit up what they were choking on and, and they didn't even hesitate. They jumped right into action. So, so Mr. Monahan's right. They are amazing for what they do and, um, you know, we wouldn't be the school system we are without them. So, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll, I'll, I'll stick around if you have any questions. So I appreciate you having me. Thanks, Mike. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice Thanks, to buddy. see you both. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Always a wealth of information, and you're doing a great job as Brockton School Superintendent. We're lucky to have you. Um, just a, a, a few things. Uh, just piggybacking on the power issue. The first thing that we lost uh, when our budget went down uh, was our power professionals. That meant our after-school programs. Uh, a lot of children depend on those after-school programs to get that secondary help that they need uh, to stay uh, with the class. So the fact that we're going to have uh, our after-school programs back uh, is a godsend. Uh, secondly, I know uh, the school committee members, I believe it was Cynthia who mentioned that a little, a uh, couple, about a month ago, the school committee uh, voted uh, to um, approve the, um, um, what's it called, the statement of interest uh, uh, for the uh, renovation of Brockton High, as uh, the city council just got that uh, final approval last week. So we're now in the uh, pipeline uh, to try to get our, uh, our, our high school uh, completely renovated. Um, I also, I left some, I printed some flyers out, Mike handed out at the last school committee meeting regarding the uh, Student Opportunity Act. So I made a bunch of copies of those and I put them on uh, the uh, table in the back. I recommend everybody grab one. It has a wealth of information about uh, the additional uh, funds that are coming to Brockton. So please grab one uh, and, t and read it. Um, and also, what? Just to mention on the high school renovations, I think earlier they mentioned how old that high school was and me, myself and Council Cruz took a little offense to that because we were there the first year it opened as freshmen. So it's so, old but not that old. Well that just proves how old it is. <laughs> Uh, additionally, on that note, I also printed up uh, what would have been an uh, estimated time frame uh, that if we do uh, receive uh, the, the approval from the school maintenance building, uh, I don't even know the acronym, the MSBA. Uh, so there is kind of a time frame uh, that I printed out uh, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, Mike. Uh, Mike handed out to us at our uh, uh, city council meeting. So I wanted to share that with you all so that you would have some perspective about the time frame we're talking about uh, to get these renovations completed. So that's the last of our invited guests. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, right now is uh, give our other city council members who are here tonight an opportunity to speak to you if they so desire. Uh, uh, Dennis always has plenty to say. Dennis, you interested in uh, addressing the crowd? Well, since you said that, I want to <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ask that you make a brief, uh, Councilman. We're only here for two hours. Right. <laughs> the food's gone, so they're no longer interested. So now I know why it was a joint meeting, so you could do all the work. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand how he works. He but anyway. I, I do want to take a couple of minutes and, and I want to commend a uh, new council from Ward 5 for jumping right in and wanting to do a, a ward meeting because I think it's important, um, something that I've always done, even when I was a school committee member, we had ward meetings. As a city council, I've had, I was, and as a uh, city council, I've always, um, I've always had uh, ward meetings as well. And Council Monaghan as well, because I think they're important to have. It um, doesn't matter sometimes where the location is, it's, it's getting people together. And that's what's most important. And I think that's what we're trying to strive for as, as we've taken on this new year, new mayor, new councils, new school committee members, new superintendent of schools. And I might say, I've known Michael since he was a little tight, to be truthful with you. So it go, he and I go back a long time as a, he was an old East Side boy. Um, and it's great to have him as the superintendent of the schools because he, he knows enough about the city and he knows enough about the school system and he knows what the children's needs are. And that's what he's telling you right now when he's trying to determine what we have to do with Brockton High School. Um, I attended the Brockton High School, so did my, my colleague from Ward 2, colleague from Ward 1 that was here, uh, the mayor. Um, you know, we all were, were products of um, Brockton High School. And it's time, it's time that we do something with the building. There's no doubt we need to, like everything, you know, your home after about 
20, 25 years, it's time we want to do a revamping, the same thing here. And you're doing it for the best interest of the children. And the education that the children receive is most important. So that's that's going to be a big plus. It really is a big plus. But in any case, I don't want to keep, I don't want to keep babbling, but um, I, I commend all of you for coming out tonight. And uh, I hope that you've uh, had, you know, a chance to, uh, you know, receive some information that you want. And any time, as you all know, all councils are available. Um, as you know, I represent Ward 3. Um, in my 17th year of representing the people from Ward 3 and uh, enjoyed immensely. Uh, but if any time I can ever help uh, anybody, naturally my phone number is right on the uh, website and in, in, uh, in the phone book as well. I know it's an old saying when you say phone book. I didn't say Facebook, phone book, okay? But um, anyhow, it's, it's good to see everybody, and I appreciate the fact I had a chance to say hello. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. And thank you, Dennis, for your service to our uh, community. Um, Rita, Rita Mendez, our uh, newly elected uh, city, uh, city councilor at large. Uh, Rita. Hello. Oh, I see. Hi, Julia. Hi. I hope everyone can hear me. Hi. Can you hear? loud okay so I'll try to speak as loud as I can it's very hard but <laughs> I try thank you so much for everyone being here tonight we had um, a council at large meeting maybe about two weeks ago and it's always good to be out there meeting all the residents and the community letting them know what's going on in the city so it's so good and I'm here today as a resident because I'm a ward 5 resident so I'm, I was just here today to sit and listen but it's always good to be here and we just want to make ourselves available and um, the most important thing that I think that we can get out of it tonight is really that we have to all get together so we can work on the census. That is very, very important to make sure that everybody in the city gets counted, especially those that don't speak English or maybe they're not uh, documented in the country. They may be afraid to report uh, that they live at a certain address. So we really need to get the message out there that it's safe and that we need to get everyone counted because these people, they're going to to our schools, they're going, uh, getting doctor's appointments, they're using the benefits, but if they're not getting counted, then we're not getting the money for them. So it's very important that we stick together and let them know and assure them it is going to be safe. We're not going to get reported to ICE. So that's, I know, the very hard to count population. And we need the community to get together and really work on that because we need to le reach at least 100,000 number of residents in this city in order for us to be in a, a better position. And the Brockton High School renovation, looking forward to it, and that's going to be fun. I also graduated from Brockton High, so <laughs> thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. So um, I guess I'm going to open it up for a few questions. If anybody has any specific questions about Ward 5 uh, or Ward 2, we'll take a few questions. Um, I, I know I don't see a clock. So I'm sure we're uh, up against it, but uh, if anybody has any questions, um, please. And before, I did leave a bunch of my cards on uh, the table in the back that has my contact information. I will always be available uh, for any concerns, questions. I, I tend to respond within 24 to 48 hours. So uh, please grab my, grab my card. You'll have my contact information. Let's begin the dialogue. Sir. I'm familiar, yes. You know what's gonna happen with that? What gonna do with it? So I believe currently that's a school property still. Um, it's currently being used as storage, uh, excessive storage. Also, there's a rule against what you because you because of the back field, the field in the back of this of the school, there's a large field in the back. And because of that the state has to get involved. The state would have to get you need so much green space. So City's not just allowed to sell it, and it's not feasible to bring that back as a school because the way you'd have to knock right. it down to build a new school. Wow. So, right now, it's just used as storage, and the city's not allowed just to sell it because of that large field in the back. Hopefully, someday we can work together and actually make that a useful field. Yes. Because it is really nice space. Actually, I had, I, I'm a member of the gym behind it, Senate City. I've been there for years. So, um, which Ed, is Ed, great man. And, yeah. <laughs> I've been with Ed since I've been. So, um, 
So it's really a nice field that maybe we can work together to do something. Yes, I, I agree. That's that's a um, an empty an empty space that's not getting any uh, use out of it. Um, I've actually uh, I was at Downey Baseball uh, uh, for their trophy ceremony. Uh, mid last year, late last year. And so uh, one of the constituents uh, came up and said, you know what would, would really be a great thing there? Would be a, a rec center for our kids, right? So I mean, I think that would be a great use for that uh, building. Uh, s someplace our children can come to uh, during the winter months uh, when they can't be outside uh, to use that as a rec space and that has that beautiful field in the back that's not getting a lot of use. So uh, at some point, I'd definitely like to work with our state delegation because there will be uh, some state involvement um, in the sale of that area. So uh, if we can put that back either on the tax rolls or, or use it for our kids, uh, that'd be that that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work for that. Yeah, I, I think there's plenty of room. Um, uh, we can always use more uh, spaces for our children. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club's a great organization. Uh, maybe they would decide to uh, move in a, a secondary uh, Boys and Girls Club in that area. So um, not to compete, but to supplement. And uh, I really think the east side could really use uh, that type of center. Um, so uh, I will work with our state delegation to, to maybe start asking the questions that need to be asked. You're welcome, sir. Anybody else? All right. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tom Moynihan. He's going to open it up for Ward 2 questions. Uh, again, it was my pleasure being here tonight with all of you. Thank you for coming. And, and again, this is the start of a conversation and a dialogue that we're all going to have over the next few years. And I look forward to that. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And for, Jeff did a great, I mean, fantastic job playing this. So let's give him a big hand for what he did tonight. His first meeting. Great kid. Uh, just a little bit on Ward 2. What I'm looking into right now is that we have the Whitman School people have asked me about. I'm looking into hopefully getting, it's been up for sale a couple of times. We really didn't have any projects going into that. I talked to a few uh, developers the other day. We'll see what happens. Maybe turning that into condos. I listen to the condos, maybe apartments, but some development there in that neighbor, in the neighborhood, because it's a little run down around that area that it would spruce it up a little bit. So I'm looking at that right now. Uh, also, I talked earlier, I met with the BRA about 19 Green Street on the old Robinson Appliance. That's really, that they have a uh, developer that has the, has the finances, is also a contractor and will be doing the work himself. So that should be going through pretty soon. Uh, also, you didn't know this yet, but we'll be meeting with the mayor's office. Um, I already talked to the Main Spring, uh, BRA, BHA, uh, because there was some property down off of Wyman Street I've been looking at for the past few years to possibly take over for a community center for the homeless. Uh, that community center would take the homeless and keep them inside all day, training, looking for new jobs, uh, doing, getting their services there. I'd also like to see the needle exchange move from Pleasant Street, possibly a mobile needle exchange. So we want to get, move them out of the downtown area. It's still in the downtown, but it's farther away, and they will have resources to hopefully get them out of that situation that they're in. So we'll be meeting with them shortly. The mayor is putting together a meeting. Uh, and so hopefully, within the next few years, we can get something going on. I know in Ward 5, they were looking at the CSX property for years, but there's no way in heck we're going to be able to take that over. It's just going to be too much money, and I don't know if they want to sell it. But we'll see about that. So that's what I'm really doing right now. And, and don't forget, as counselors, we're, we're here to take care of your problems. Call us on the phone, whatever you need. If you need signs on your street, if you potholes, any, anything, issues that you're having that I normally get calls about. But don't forget, that's what your counselor is there for. You got issues? That's what the phone's for. Call them. They should answer you. If they don't get back to you, there's an issue, but they usually all do. So don't forget to take, take advantage of your counselor, and uh, they can always help you out with any issues you're having. And again, thanks again for coming tonight. And let's give Jeff another hand, because he did such a great job putting this together. Thank you, Tom.
Sorry, and I know I said goodnight, but one last thing. Um, please be on a lookout. I will be putting out information regarding another community meeting uh, based upon uh, 308 Quincy Street. That's the development that's going to be going on uh, behind the um, behind the uh, gas station at the intersection of Crescent and Quincy Street. There's an empty area right behind the gas station. Uh, there's a, a development project going in there. I want to make sure that all of you have the uh, information about that. The developers will be there to, um, to talk to you. I have not yet set a date, but I will make sure that information gets out there in uh, with timely notice. Again, thank you for coming. God bless.